Hello, welcome to Code for Fun's introduction to web design. My name is Sunita Tivre. I'm a software engineer and a lead computer science instructor. Today's session is a peek into our web course that is mainly designed for students in the age group of 11 to 15 who are getting started in web designing and want to learn the fundamentals of creating their website. In this introductory session, we will be touching on points such as what do you use a website for? What are the different layouts? What technologies do we use? What elements do we use? Well, we can answer all that. So let's get started. So let's begin. Before we start our actual coding, we look at some of the websites that already exist. It's cool because you can see the various layouts that they have and that will help you decide how you want to design your website. Let's start off with Wikipedia. Okay, here we have the Wikipedia website. Now let's look at it from the designer's point of view. What do we observe? One thing for sure, this website is very rich in text. After all, it's a digital encyclopedia. The layout, you have three columns, the left being the navigation, and the text is arranged in two columns right here. We have headings, paragraphs, we have a couple of images, we have lists, there are several HTML elements being used here. Another observation here is there are a lot of links. So if you hover over say this word or maybe this text, you will see that the cursor changes to a hand. Now these links are used to connect to different sections of the page as well as external websites. Okay, so our observation is it's a website that is rich in text. It makes use of several elements such as headings, paragraphs, links, lists. Okay, so let's see another example. Now here we have the National Geographic uh, website. Now what you see here is it's different from the Wikipedia page. Here you have a lot of text while here you have a lot of images. So the layout is different as well. But what is common are the elements. So once again, we have the heading, we have a subheading, we have a link right here, we have images. Okay, so there's a little video going around there. Okay, so a lot of images on this website. So you have to keep in mind that when we select the layout, we want to first understand as to what the purpose of the website is. Let's see one more example. Now this is a recipe website. Again, we have several HTML elements being here, such as headings. We have a paragraphs, a short one there. We have links. We have images. We have lists right here and there are two types. One is the unordered list for ingredients and then we have an ordered list. Now all these elements can be inserted or coded in your HTML page using tags. So we're going to, we're going to talk about that. Okay. So let's go back to our layouts. So here you see that there are several layouts. Which layout you select really depends on what's the purpose of your website okay and what content do you want to display another factor uh, which you should consider is who are you designing it for okay so the general layout the look depends on your end user the purpose of the website as well as the content okay so let's move on so now let's talk about what makes a web page just like we have bones or the essential structure, HTML is used to code the structure of a web page. So that's going to be your headings, your paragraphs, and information of the website. Now, HTML doesn't have a lot of flexibility in terms of looks, so we're going to use CSS or cascading style sheets to modify the look of the website. So you can add color, different fonts, and other fun stuff. As you see in this picture, all the people have different hair color, 
skin color, clothes, and look different from each other, although their basic structure is the same. So you can control the look of your website using CSS. And lastly, we have JS or JavaScript. This is used to add functionalities, so you can add animations and interactivity to your web page. We won't be covering CSS and JavaScript in our intro session. Our main focus would be on HTML. Here is a good example of what a web page looks like with all three. Let's start with HTML. You see that it's a kind of a blueprint of the website with the essential structure and information. We then add the CSS. We are able to change the background color, fonts, and style the web page. Finally, we have JavaScript. We were able to add interactive elements such as this button that displays a real date and time. This makes our website more interesting and advanced. So what is HTML? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Hypertext is a method of using hyperlinks to move around the web. Hyperlinks help us connect to different sections of a page, other pages within a website, and an external website. HTML, unlike Python or C++, is not a programming language, but a markup language. It makes use of tags. HTML is not used to program applications, but to design a website. HTML is a language, so it uses code words and syntaxes just like any other language. HTML uses markup tags to describe different elements on a page. So if you see the small image here, we have an opening tag and a closing tag. The closing tag is indicated by a forward slash. This is the information in between. Now most of the tags in HTML have an opening and a closing tag, except for a few. We will be using one such tag. Okay, now let's look at the structure and the essential tags that are needed to create an HTML page. Now every web page starts with a doc type. That's a way of telling the browser what markup language the web page is written in. Next, we have the HTML tags. These indicate that the web page is written in HTML. You'll notice that the HTML has two main sections, the head section and the body section. The head section mainly contains the information about the page, such as the title, the language used, the location, the external style sheets, etc whereas the body contains the main content, such as paragraphs, images, heading, links, etc. It's very important to remember that the tags are always written in lowercase and must include both the opening and the closing tags. Now the next question you may have in mind is, what coding platform are we using? There are several softwares you can use, such as Notepad++ on Windows, Text Wrangler, Visual Studio, or a web-based IDE. Today, we would be using REPL.IT. It's web-based, so all you need is a browser. You could use any of these. We're going to start coding now. So open up a browser and type in REPL.IT. You'll get a page that looks like this. Click on Start Coding. To save your work, you need to be signed in. You can do so either by creating a Replit account or you could log into your Google account. I'll be using mine. If you need time to sign in, you may pause the video. So let's move on. To create a new REPL, click on the blue button. Select the language as HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Give it a good name. and then click on the blue button. Okay, so now once your record has been loaded, we're gonna modify the code. There's a lot of settings here that we do not need today. Okay, so we're gonna remove a few so that we just have the bare essential tags that we need. So we have, we can get rid of the meta tags. 
the link here and the script. So what you get to see here are the essential tags needed to create an HTML page. So we've discussed this. We have the doc type, which tells the browser that this is an HTML page. We have the HTML tags, which include the head and the body. The title is an information of the page. That's the reason it's in the head section. Notice how these tags are indented because the head and the body section are a part of HTML, whereas the title is a part of the head section. So it's very important that you indent because it becomes easier to read your code. Now let's look at the different uh, parts of the screen or interface. This white box is the area where you actually write the code. Once you've written the code, you would click on the green button and you would see the output right here, okay? Now this column on the left, where you see your HTML, JavaScript, your style.css is the area where your files and media are stored. We won't be covering JavaScript and cascading style sheets today, but they're covered in our web design course. Now, the reason this file is named as index.html because the home page of every website is named as index.html. It's easier for browsers to find this. So if you were to add images, sound, videos to your files, they would appear right here. So this is like the directory of your website. All your files and medias are in this area. So once again, this is the file area. This is the area where you actually program. And this is the area where you see the output. Now, what we are using is HTML5, okay? So there was a time when the older versions of HTML, this doc type used to be really long, okay? But now that we're using HTML5, this suffices. Okay, cool. Now, let's just change the title of my website and make it as uh, maybe just the first website. Okay, and I'm gonna run it. Now, what do you observe? I don't see anything here. Any guesses why? Well, remember what I told you. Any information that is related to the website appears in the head section. Okay, so this is something which tells the browser what the title of the website is. This area is what you see on the website. So if you wanna see anything here, you need to put it in the body section, okay? Now, where does this appear? So when you run your program, okay, and if I were to make it full screen or open it up in a new tab, you would see the title. Now, to give you an example, if you see this, this is where you see the title. It's the title of the web page, okay? So now that we have the head section, let's see if we can add some content. Let's now talk about adding content to our page. The first tag we're gonna learn about are the headings. Headings are defined with H1 through H6 tags. H1 defines the most important heading and H6 the least one. When we start coding, you'll notice that the heading tags make the text bold and the size decreases from H1 through H6. Like all other tags, heading tags have both the starting as well as the end tag. So remember to include both. Another important thing to remember is that the H tags are meant for headings only. Do not use them 
to make your regular text bigger or bolder. We have other tags to do that. The reason you should not use these tags with regular text is because search engines like Google use these tags to influence the way your website is searched. Plus, it might mess with the functionality of tools such as screen readers. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add headings to our body section. So let's start off with the H1 tag. Now observe what I'm doing here. The moment I have the opening tag, I have put in the closing tag as well. Now the reason I do this is so that I don't forget the closing tag. And then I put in my text. Let's run it. There you go. So as discussed, the heading is bold. And since it's a part of the body, you see it on the web page. Now remember, a lot of students put the H1 tag in the head. You don't do that. It's a part of the web content. So it goes in the body section. Let's try out H2 now. And then let me change it to heading two. Okay, now what do you observe? Remember I told you, as the number increases, the size decreases, but both are bold because both of them are headings. Okay, so now what I want you to do is go ahead and try out the other headings as well. So these are the headings for you. Again, a part of the body section. As the numbers increase, size decreases, all headings are bold. Okay, so now the question is, which heading should I use? What number should I use? That all depends on what you're designing the website for and how you want it to look, okay? So it's a good idea to reserve the H1 for the main heading of the website, okay? Now, I personally think H6 and H5 are too small. So you could use H1 for the main heading and uh, maybe like the H2s and the H3s for some kind of, you know, uh, your section main heading and subheading. Okay, so headings are used for headings as well as subheadings. So H1 is the main title or the main heading of the web page. Then H2 would be like the heading of a subsection. And then you could use H3 as a subheading. So when we do our next activity, I'll show you how these are used. So for now, complete the heading section. Okay, now that we have the headings in place, let's add some regular text. We can do this using the P tag. Just like an essay, an HTML page is divided into several paragraphs. All HTML paragraphs should have both the opening and the closing tags. So let's go ahead and include them in our code. Now that we know what P tags are, let's go ahead and create one so that we have some normal text as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this title and say I want to create a web page to display a topic of my choice. See, I like computer fundamentals, so I just say computer fundamentals, for example. Okay, so that's my title. Okay, next. What I want to do is change the heading. I want this to be, again, computer fundamentals. Let me just keep this as website one so that it's easier for me to find when I search my reports. Okay. So you have this 
you have a title. For now, I don't need this, okay? So now I have a main title that says main heading, okay? Now, I want to create a subheading. So I say H3. I like the size difference. So I say, what is a computer? There you go. Now, I want to add some normal text. So I'm going to use a P tag. Opening, closing, always a good idea. Okay. And then you can start typing in. So I may just say, Okay, now if I run this, see what happens. So I have the main title, I have a subheading, and I have a paragraph, okay? Now, if I add more, what happens? Okay. Okay, so what happens is it becomes a part of my paragraph because it's within the opening and closing tags. Okay, now what if I want another paragraph? I make use of another P tag. Okay, now we're going to see what happens when we use two paragraphs, one after the other, okay? Now, before I do that, let me give another subheading, okay? Because my second paragraph is about hardware and software, maybe. Okay. So now, if you see, I have a paragraph which talks about what a computer is, and next, I have hardware versus software. Of course, I don't have anything in this paragraph. That's the reason I don't see it. But see what I've done. H3, H3. So this gives a very consistent look to your website. Okay, so you have the main heading and all your subheadings are of the same size. Now you can style this up with CSS, but for now we're talking about HTML. Okay. So let's add one more paragraph.
So what I want you to do is, if you're working with me, I want you to create another paragraph for software. Okay. And while you're working with me, if you need to pause at any time, please do so. Okay, good. So now I have two paragraphs. Notice that there's a space. Now a header, a heading as well as a paragraph are known as block elements. That's the reason we have lines at the beginning and at the end. Okay, so the browser puts in that line there. Cool. Now, one thing I want you to uh, wanted to show you was if I didn't have this H3, see what happens. Did you see that? That's the reason closing tags are really important. Okay, because for the computer, it was like, oh, my H3 tag is starting here and I'm not still seeing an end. So it just made everything bold there. Okay, so go ahead and create one more paragraph. So now before you uh, go on to create your own web page, let me remind you that this web page is live. So REPL.IT actually is hosting your web page. So you want to be very careful not to share any personal information on this, okay? And if you want to, you know, like share it with someone, you can always send them this link and they would be able to view it. Okay. So that's great. So we'll move on to the first student activity and challenge. Okay, now it's your turn. Create your own web page. Mine is about computers, but you may choose your own topic. It could be about your hobby, your favorite sport, movie, or any other topic you're passionate about. So create an HTML page, add a heading, subheading, and two or more paragraphs. Don't forget to change the title. And yes, be very careful not to share any private information since this website is live. So pause the video and get coding. So now, this is what I have. Okay, so I have a heading, main heading, two subheadings, three paragraphs. Okay, so I hope you're working along with me. So just a few things now that we have created paragraphs. Indenting, very important. It me makes uh, reading the code much easier always opening and closing tags. Do not forget that. Another thing is the heading and the paragraphs are block elements. So you have these lines before and after. Okay, so that was our observation. Now, there's something interesting I want you to show. Okay. If I do this, let's see what happens, okay? If I want this on the next line and I run this code, notice what happens, nothing. Surprising? What if I wanted spaces? I put in plenty of spaces and I run it, no effect. Okay, so this is something really, really important. Paragraphs do not recognize spaces and line breaks. Okay, so if you want to introduce a line break, you need to use another tag. And that is the BR tag. Okay, so remember I told you that most of the tags in HTML have an opening and a closing tag for a few exceptions. The BR tag is one. 
So now if I see the BR tag right here, and if I run it, there you go. So now I have it on the next line. So this is a tag I can use for a line break. Okay. Now, a lot of people, what they do is, since it does not have a closing tag, it's a good practice to put the forward slash after the BR. Okay, so this acts as the opening as well as the closing tag, so all in one. And then you run it. And there you have it. So if you want line breaks, make use of the BR tag. If you want spaces, let me, just, uh, let me just try say hello there or something like that. So say I have a P tag and I say hello there. I'll, I'll uh, actually get rid of this later once I show you. Okay. And then I have the closing tag. I do this. I don't see it. I put in spaces, plenty of spaces, run, no effect. So how do I put in a space? I know how to put a line. How do I put in a space? So you can do and N B S P a semicolon. And now let's see what happens. There you go. So you have that extra space there. But be very careful because sometimes browsers don't like the using this. So use this very, very few times if you need to, only and only if you need to. Okay, so there you have it. So now the next activity that we would do is uh, actually make use of the BR tag and the best way is, um, let's say uh, we have a poem or a rhyme, you know, so that we have those lines on separate lines. So let's go ahead and create a new project. So I would just click on this plus sign here. I would select the language once again, and I would just say poem, okay? And say create a REPL. Okay, now like we did in the previous case, I would get rid of the settings that I do not need. So when you learn about CSS, this is where you would give a link to your external style sheet. So, but that's, not what's going to be covered today. And then your JavaScript comes in the body and not in the header because it helps the website to load faster. Okay, so now let's go ahead and change this title. Okay, and then with what we have learned, let's uh, put in, let's make use of H2 here. Okay. Okay, and then you could go ahead and we'll finish the poem. So this is what we have. I put in an H1 as well. So I have a heading, I have a subheading, and then I have a poem right here. I just, you know what happens if I do this? It appears in the same line. That's the reason I had the BR tag. Okay, so that's it. We have learned about headings, about paragraphs, 
about putting in breaks. We also talked about not using headings as regular text. Okay. So there are a lot of uh, tags that uh, one can use if you wanted to make a particular word in a regular text bold. So although we cover that in our other session, I'll show that to you. Say if I wanted wonder to be bold, what do I do? So I just say em, and then it has a closing tag as well. So if I do this, if you see what happened, it became italics. So this is to make it italics. If I or to emphasize this, if I wanted bold, I make use of the B tag. And there you have it. Okay, so that's how you make your regular text bold. Okay, so there are a lot of um, tags that you can use to add styles as well as attributes are also included in those tags. So we're gonna cover all that in our web design course. But for now, this is what we have. Okay, now that you know the significance of using the BR tag, go ahead, create a new HTML file to display your favorite poem. Add a heading, subheading, and a paragraph, and use the BR tag to introduce line breaks. Welcome back. Hopefully you were able to add an HTML page add headings, subheadings, paragraphs, and line breaks. Well, this is just the beginning. There's a lot more our full web design course has to offer. Let's wrap up today's session with a quick recap and an overview of our web design course. We started today's intro session with a website exploration where we visited some commonly used websites to study their layout as well as the elements being used such as headings, paragraphs, images, videos, links, etc. Then we saw the three main technologies that are used to create websites, namely HTML to add structure, CSS, the style, and JavaScript, the functionality or interactivity. This is how your web page changes at every level. CSS is basically adding style to the HTML page and JavaScript, the functionality. This being an intro session, we talked about the fundamentals of HTML. We said it makes use of hyperlinks to connect to the various portions of a page or other pages within a website or even to an external website. Now, HTML being a markup language makes use of tags to display elements now, most of the elements have an opening and closing tags. These tags are enclosed in angle brackets. Then we talked about the essential tags in an HTML page, as well as the page structure. We said that every page has a header section and a body section. The header section mainly uh, talks about the information about the page, such as what language is being used, what's the title, whereas the body section has the content. So that is what is displayed on the web page. The doc type tells the browser as to what software or what language is being used to create the web page. In our case, it's HTML. We then get introduced to the various coding platforms. We made use of an IDE, that is REPL.IT, Then we added content to our web page with headings. We use tags from H1 to H6 to create headings and subheadings. We use the P tag to create paragraphs. Like the heading, it has an opening and closing tag. We saw that paragraphs do not recognize spaces and returns. So we made use of the BR tag to add new lines. We applied what we had learned to add headings, subheadings, paragraphs, and breaks in the student activities that we did. 
and you created your very first web page. So that is a quick recap of today's session. Hope it was a learning experience. You're now on your way to creating your own website. If you're interested in learning more, do consider enrolling for a web design course where we cover HTML5, CSS3, as well as JavaScript. In the HTML5 section, in addition to what we learned today, we'll talk about different tags to add images, lists, tables, sound, videos, and forms to your web pages. You'll also learn about CSS3 to style up your web page and make it more visually appealing using different methods such as inline, internal, and external style sheet. Finally, we'll talk about JavaScript functions to make your website interactive. At the end of the course, you would have gained enough skills to build a multi-page website. You can use it to demo it to your friends, family, or share your knowledge and skills with the world. The next step in the learning process would be our level one course. In addition to HTML basics, headings, and paragraphs that we covered today, this level includes topics like adding pre-formatted text, HTML styles, images, lists, organizing data in tables, formatting your text, like making it bold, italics, and much more. Here is a cool sample project. We have two column layout, a background color, a colored heading, the text is formatted, and we have images. With the skills gained in level one, you'll be able to create such projects and many more. So I highly recommend you try it out. Well, that's it for today's session. If you were able to add headings and paragraphs, great job. You just created your very first web page. A website or several web pages following a common theme connected to each other using links. So if you want to learn more, like adding images, lists, tables, forms, etc. to your web page or styling it up with CSS and adding interactivity with JavaScript, do consider signing up for a web design course by clicking on the link below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can check out our website for other courses you may be interested in. Till then, happy exploring! and have fun coding. Bye-bye.